Welcome, everybody. We may have a few latecomers coming in. Hi, Christine. Great to hear, see you here again this week. Um, awesome. So this week in our masterclass, we are going through the um, marketing and sales. So it's all around the critical drivers within your business to ensure that we're you know, continually getting new clients, getting new leads coming in, and also what's specific to RTO as well. Um, so what would be the best strategies to put in place to drive leads and sales um, and through into your business. So that is one that we're going to have a look at. So there's different strategies that we have, you know, do a referral system, sales scripts, uh, website, SEO, digital marketing strategy, and marketing collateral. I know a lot of RTOs are not taking advantage of search engine optimization and Google ads. So this is why we've got our guru here today, who will be uh, speaking about that. Nathan, welcome, Nathan. Uh, Nathan, you. yep, cool, go. <laughs> That's it, back to you, I'm good. Okay, Nathan has uh, started work with us October last year, October, yeah, November. Pretty close um, And has really been a game changer with our SEO and our Google ads. We've had a massive difference uh, we were spending money on ads that were not serving us. Uh, the funniest part was when we got a phone call from someone desperately trying to find a vet to help him get his horse out of a big hole. <laughs> and that was the type of phone calls we were getting. We were getting vet calls. We were getting, you know, driver's licenses and um, different things that weren't relevant for us. And I think I've just frozen. So we'll just see if we come back online. Yep, cool, we're back. All right. Um, so yes, we were getting all the wrong calls. We were getting, you know, people who wanted to renew their driver's license, someone who wanted to get a truck license, um, vets, someone to help with their rabbit uh, and dogs desexed and things like that. So we were getting irrelevant uh, messages and, and uh, even people going onto our website, registering for a discovery call that was not relevant to what we we're doing. So since having Disruptor doing our uh, SEO and our Google ads, we now have better quality leads that are coming through. Um, and most importantly, uh, we're not wasting a whole heap of time on phone calls and uh, leads coming in through our website that are relevant to what we do, which uh, we were often redirecting people to um, a vet, uh, RTA. <laughs> uh, we were also uh, getting a lot of ASPA calls. So we're getting a lot of people that want to make a complaint to ASPA, uh, which was also uh, our team was spending a lot of time redirecting them to ASPA and how to make a complaint and which we don't mind doing that, but it does take time away from what we should be doing, which is serving our clients. So uh, so we've got a few more people have just come in. So awesome, welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. So I was just going through a bit of what, what, what impact we've had on our Google ad optimization and on our organic SEO as well on our website, uh, which has been a big, uh, game changer with having to disrupt our come in and the better quality leads that we're getting uh, coming through our website. So uh, getting started, I really want you to think about today what you can implement into your marketing strategies within your RTO. Um, this is a, um, you know, we really encourage you to interact with us uh, add some questions in the chat box. I'll be monitoring the questions in the chat box. Really encourage you to ask questions if need be. Um, Nathan, you prefer at the end? Yeah, preferably. And look, even if they drop the question as they think of it in chat, by all means. And look, if it's if it's directly um, related to the, the, you know, the section we're going through, then by all means, we can do it just to break up me just here, you know, Yep. Uh, flapping yep. my lips the whole time, but um, preferably the big ones at the end, just because uh, uh, some of the questions we can go down a bit of a rabbit hole to answer. Yes, yes. So I'll, uh, so as you think of a question, pop them in the chat. If I think it's directly relevant, um, we will uh, address that. 
in particular if it's a question also around compliance as well. Um, so we'll go uh, with that. Um, but then we'll have a big open ended at the end uh, where we uh, can ask further questions. So I'd love to um, you know, hear what, you, what else other questions you may have, uh, because also it could be looking at um, what we can do down the track for other masterclasses as well. Um, some of the things that I will be going through some training uh, that we will be putting onto the eight critical drivers um, course on vivacity training is we're going to go through some uh, training on uh, branding, um, how to define who you are, your unique selling position, looking at social media marketing and things like that. So that's some additional training that I will be adding. We'll also be putting uh, this course, uh, today's session onto the eight critical drivers as well. So I just wanted you to know that there will be some more training that's going in there. This is stuff that I've put together um, and also some strategies that I've had I've been putting into place uh, for uh, social media marketing. And I'm doing currently right now, and some of our clients would know about this, I'm currently doing a uh, sell by chat. So we've got a new, um, we've got a new uh, Stella Trainer Matrix Masterclass that we're marketing at the moment and we're selling that through chat. So uh, we've got a lot of inquiries from people who are interested in doing this masterclass. Um, all of our members, you get it included and you can send all of your trainers along to the masterclass as well. So um, I will be uh, also sharing with you uh, those strategies that I've learned from the um, masterclass and um, uh, and and how we how you can implement sell, sell by chat as well in, into your organisation. So I've got team members chatting away in the background, which is distracting me. <laughs> so I've just turned that off, so um, that doesn't distract me any further. Okay, all right. So um, I'm going to hand over to Nathan, um, and I need to give you share. Is that right? Uh, or panelists, or panelists. Go. So I'm going to share this. Okay, guys. So I'm just going to bring up my slide deck here. Oops. The Vivacity website came up. Could have ended it. Hey. Glad I had something, had the right thing on the screen. <laughs> it is. It is. All right. Let's go through this. So, what I'm going to go through, guys, is what we refer to as the new way to do SEO. So, what you can expect from this, or what would you call it, this presentation, this talk, um, I'm going to give you guys a truckload of value. So, and I, I should preface this by saying I'm actually going to break what we call the number one rule in webinars. So, the number one rule in webinars is you're not supposed to ever teach people more than three, th more than, that was the wrong amount of fingers, three things, because if in doing so, you fry the circuitry and you, you don't get any business out of it and stuff like that. That's not really what I'm about here today. I'm basically just going to keep throwing value at you guys because I want you to actually be able to, uh, at the end of this, to better have something that you can take straight into, into your RTO and to put into place like same day and you're going to get a, a bump in, in rankings, in Google Ads value and leads and so forth. So quick run through of some acronyms. Uh, SEO, so search engine optimization. Most people, when, they, when I even say that, probably like slump back in their chair and go, like, oh God, here we go. I'm going to get a phone call expecting like a, you get this subliminal image of like a, their phone ringing from somewhere in India and someone trying to sell them something. So search engine optimization is basically any, anything you would do in, uh, as an act to get your website to show uh, more highly in Google search is basically what we class as SEO or search engine optimization. Um, what I'm going to go through here today I'm not just going to be talking about like really in the reads SEO advanced ninja strategies. What I'm rather what I'm going to go through is a, a five part framework that we use in our in our agency that allows people to get positive ROI from pretty much any digital marketing activity that you want, that you guys undertake. So it it absolutely applies to SEO. It also absolutely applies to to, to Google Ads. But it equally it can be used across really anything from Facebook ads to social media to we've even got people that use this for 
um, like even for like when they're creating flyers and things like that and, and like physical promotional products. So I, I assume that you guys uh, won't, won't uh, be against learning a five part framework that you can basically use in your RTO like this afternoon to get positive ROI. So let, let's go through it. A little bit about, about us. So we're an outcomes agency. So a lot of agencies will, will come in and not talk about services. So they'll be like, you know, we do social media or we do this or we do that. Essentially our, our agency is all about with, with, uh, meeting with companies and going great. Rather than like, what's the symptom that you're having in your marketing? What's the actual problem? So for most businesses, the actual problem that they find is they want more sales. And so effectively what, what, what we do is we work with businesses to work out what's the actual target they're trying to hit. And then we help them reverse engineer a solution to suit. So we're based here in Sydney, a team of about 15. Who am I? All right. So father nerd coffee addict. I, my favorite Star Wars coffee cups, not here. Um, thank you. Yeah. What, what's that one? Go closer. Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Okay. Um, father, first and foremost. So I've, I've become absolutely obsessed with coaching my, uh, my kids' football teams, which is quite funny because I'm, I'm not really a football guy. Um, and we're actually winning my daughter's comp, which is quite hilarious because the other coaches are like ex. We live in the, in the Sutherland Shire in Sydney. And the other coaches are like you know, ex Cronulla Shark League legends have played State of Origin. And then there's me, like the web guy. But we're winning and our, 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 my daughter's team has a heaps better website than everyone else's. So in your face. Um, this presentation. So uh, Angela, I assume I can, I can offer this. So guys, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm gonna, there's, there's heaps of value, like heaps of resources that I've listed in this slide deck. Um, rather than sit there killing yourself writing notes, we'll just give you the slide deck. Yeah. So by all means, don't, don't hurt yourself. Just, just stay with me and listen. Um, so I'm going to go through our actual five part system. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go through and I'm, I'm going to break down each of the five parts and I'm going to give you resources for each of the five, five parts. So that, that when, so this afternoon in your RTO, you can basically go, great. Where am I the strongest? Where am I, which of those five parts am I the weakest in? And this is the resource to go off and use. So you can start picking low hanging fruit like this afternoon. All right, the great SEO misconception. So I'm gonna refer quite a number of times throughout this, this prezzo about problem versus symptom. Because so many people come to us, uh, well, about nine out of 10 businesses who inquire with us, they usually come through and what they, the, the, the top of consciousness marketing headache they have is actually a symptom. It's not the actual problem. So by that, I mean that most people come to us and we say our, our ads campaign isn't working or our, our website doesn't show high enough in Google. And what they're actually saying is we need more leads or ideally we need more sales. Um, what people think they're getting when they buy SEO. So SEO doesn't exactly have the best reputation. Like there's not many businesses that sit there just in, sit there thinking, oh God, I wish a digital agency would call me today. I just really want to talk about my SEO. Um, and there's, there's some very good reasons for that, right? So first and foremost, what people think they're buying when they buy SEO is more leads and more sales. But in actual fact, when you spend money on SEO, for the most part, all, all the agency, all you're paying them to do is to get your website to, sh to show higher in Google search. In a perfect world, there'd be this like one-to-one -one correlation between my website went from position 10 in Google to position two, and suddenly the phone, phone rings you know, exponentially more, and we could even work it out on a, on a scale. But the reality is it doesn't always work that way, which is why it's really important to understand what's the actual symptom you, that, you, that you're facing and what's the actual problem. All right, so our, the model that we use, so I've talked about this, that we've got this five part process, so we actually call it sales engine optimization. So it's our proven system for finding the lowest hanging fruit and generating breakthrough results in your search marketing. So we actually, so to give you a bit of, bit, of back, bit of background, so I used to have an RTO, well, I used to co-own an RTO. Um, I, my, my part of, the, of it was I basically ran 
built and ran and created the marketing system. Uh, we still have a number of RTO clients today. Um, and a bit of a bit of an interesting fact, I was the youngest person to ever teach uh, in an Australian TAFE. I was taught when I was 18. Um, so this model, so we, we, a lot of businesses bring us in. We have a couple of customers that are really big, like the unicorns of the Australian startup space. And uh, twice a year, they, they basically wheel us in, usually when they're getting towards like the end of financial year, and they've got a huge sales target that their team are short on. And they wheel us in and they're like, there you go. We'll, we'll, we'll remunerate you uh, in line with how much, how close you're able to get us to our target. Um, use your system. We basically go in and we, we basically roll out what I'm going to go through with you guys. So it's a process for quickly analyzing where they're strong, where they're weak. And it's like, you just keep triaging the weaker spot and you, you go up from there. So let, let's go through it. These are the five parts. So this is basically the roadmap. So in a perfect world, you'd start from the left and you'd go right. Um, quite ironically, most businesses that come to us, again, talking about problem, symptom versus problem, most people come to us at this end. They, they say, I've got a traffic problem. You know, my ads aren't working. My, my website doesn't rank high enough in Google. And when we actually look at it, there's a whole heap more we've got to look at. So tracking, the starting point for us is always going, what tracking we've got in place? Like, how do we clearly analyze the value that's coming from your marketing um, so that it can be, we can make intelligent data backed decisions. Like there's this common thing when we speak to a lot of RTOs where we say, um, how sales, how busy, is it? how busy is it? And they use this uh, really annoying gauge of like how it feels in the office. Like they say, oh, it feels busy. Like there's nothing worse than when you, as a marketing company or, or, or anyone, the business owner, when you hear these sort of answers, you, you need to be able to go, great, what's the data telling us? It's clearly saying this, this is how many leads came through. This is how many turned into sales. And this is where, that, where those sales, where the, this is where those people originated from. So let's spend more money there. Positioning. So this will, this, this will tie in quite well with some of the things that Angela pointed out when she went through that slide before. So this is such a huge one, but it's so commonly overlooked, uh, especially in the RTO space. Like RTOs in general, and this is a mass generalization, guys, so take it where it fits. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you guys usually struggle to find a unique point of difference, because especially if you're offering government-funded courses, because you're limited by how many ways you can offer it, what you can and can't say. Um, we find that for most, for so many businesses, by really nailing this part, we can actually make everything else work better. Like we had a business come to us about two months ago, um, and they said, we've got a Google ads problem. We can't, we just can't, six other agencies have had a go at it. They can't make it, they can't generate a positive return on our money. Um, when we had a look at their, their business, there was nothing unique about them. Um, well, certainly not that was being portrayed to, to the, the customer. Um, they were, even though they were, they were perceived by their uh, customers as having one of the higher end products and services in the market, they actually were like middle of the road as far as how much they charged. Um, and so we went through our standard process for positioning them as like one of the leaders in their field. So one of the first things we did was we had them put their prices up, which I'm going to talk more about in a couple of slides. Um, we basically positioned them as, as that they're one of, they're like the Ferrari in their industry. What that immediately allowed us to do was because they were making more per sale, um, that suddenly meant we could afford to spend more in the Google on in the ads and Google ads to acquire a customer. And so without even touching the Google ads, all we did was just turn the budget up. Um, suddenly the whole marketing started to work. And even though we didn't, we didn't rebuild the ads, but they, they came to us with the symptom of our ads don't work. Conversion. So conversion's an interesting one. Like there's a whole industry of conversion rate optimization and it, it's conversions a funny thing really and i'm going to give you some tips of how you can how you can get to the the, the the real source of what your conversion rate is and i'm going to give you some tips to how to fix it um the most simplest way to do conversion is basically to, to think of it this way where's everywhere in your business from when a customer first hears about you to when money clears in the bank account 
where's everything in, in between there and there where they, they're faced with, with the decision to say yes or no, um, or to take an action and not take an action. Uh, for most businesses, like, like you don't have to spend thousands, thousands of hours and hundreds of thousands of dollars sorting this out. If you get a junior to work that out, you map it into in a spreadsheet and you just triage it and go, where's the, where's the stuff that we know we can fix? And where's the biggest drop-off rates? For most businesses, if you spend a month focusing on that with a junior and someone with half, half a brain, then the amount of wins you can make is massive. And that applies to whatever you, your, whatever marketing channel you're talking about, really. That's not digital, you know, not uniquely relevant to digital. Sales. Um, so sales is an interesting one. Um, and Angela has a really good resource, I know, through this, through a, a mutual colleague of ours who's really great in this. Um, I'm going to give you guys some, some resources that I've always found make sales really easy. Um, with all businesses we speak to, sales is normally an interesting one because when it's someone at management level, um, you know, like even like the founder of the RTO, and I know that I'm not going to be talking about much smaller RTOs for, in the most part, but usually what we find is when there's someone at management level doing the sales, they can often have good success. The hard thing is when we start talking about doing it at scale and it's a junior person, like how do we set an actual system in place so that regardless of whether the, the, the your general manager's on holidays for a month or whether they're sitting there watching over your, your team, that the sales are still gonna be the same. Um, and setting up a system so that you guys are actually like selling based on value. When you get the sales part right, Anybody should be able to take answer the phone and take the call and take the call and or whoever it is and then make the sale and it should still be an enjoyable process. And then right at the end is what people usually think they have a problem with, which is traffic. So I'm going to give you guys at the end of this, I'm going to give you uh, our, our favorite two hacks for getting an, a, a relatively instant boost of targeted traffic to your website. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna have a sip of water and I'll keep going. All right, this is sound, sounding really good. So that sales, um, I'll, I'll just put it in the chat. Um, that sales converting system is about having a system that everyone on board on your team knows how to follow. So it's, it's making sure that you've got that culture in there as well. And it's not sales, it's a customer service conversation. And I think a lot of, uh, I know I've got team members who, who hear that they're to do sales and they get really scared about that because they think it's you know, hard selling, like um, be a car salesman or, or a real estate agent. It's about customer service. These are people who are ringing you who want your service. So how are you going to make sure you look after them? Yeah, that's exactly right. And sales should be fun. Like when, when this, when it's, when it's with just the basic infrastructure in here that's properly in place for this, then anyone should be able to pick up the phone. And like, we'd like to make a bit of a competition of it here in, in, on my team. Like the, the team want to go through it. Um, and when the right legwork's been done, it, it really can be that simple. All right, so this is where I'm going to start to give you guys some actual stuff that you can use. So we're going to go through each of these, these five areas, and I'm going to give you some resources that you can use. So theoretically, if you were to go in, back in, into your RTO after this, and you were to go, great, this is, where I, this is the area that, I'm, I'm, that I appear to be the weakest in, and this is where you can go next to do it. So as far as tracking goes, so all of our tracking that we do with people always starts with Google Analytics. So Google Analytics is just the free program. Look, I know some of you guys will be there going, duh. Like Google Analytics is just the free program that, that uh, Google offer that you can link up with your website and you can actually track how users interact with your site. Um, we always start here because very few people really use it to its, to its uh, proper capacity or proper capabilities. Um, so we use con a conversion tracking. So basically any outsourcer you could find off of a site like Upwork, we'll be able to help you with this, to be able to properly track, like what are, the, what are the, the micro sort of conversions or micro leads that happened with your business? Like that might be a, a white paper download. And then what are the actual macro conversions? What are the actual leads? Like someone phoning you up, someone completing an inquiry form. Um, it's important we have this in place so we can actually see these are the amount of leads that came through and then more importantly, here's, here's the marketing source 
that generated the lead. So in other words, we, here's where we should be spending our money. Um, attribution tracking. Look, I'll try and I'll try and do this as simply as possible without boring everybody to death. So one of the problems with uh, with tracking is that <clears throat> it can be quite complex. It takes it quite a complex setup to be able to follow someone from like here's the, the marketing they used that came through to, to find us, right through to it's that per that we we made a sale and it was that person over there in the blue hat and he's from Boral, Australia, and he spent $105,000. Traditionally, what happens in, track, in marketing is you can track people through to, this is how many leads came in, and then over here in Accelerate or whatever you guys are linking up and, and using, we're like, great, we know we've had this many sales, and we know we've had, sorry, this many leads, and we know we've had this many sales. Here's the money that's come through in sales. But it's like, how do you bridge that gap? Like if 50 leads came through today, and you made two sales, which were the two leads that actually generated the sales? Um, there's some stuff that in mo for most businesses that they're able to use, this is a little bit trickier for RTOs because you guys are, do use the likes of Accelerate and things like that as like a, a joint CRM slash course booking platform, you name it. Um, traditionally, we use this like uh, a thing called Pardot, which is, um, that's how I, that's how Bogan say it, Pardot. I think it's Pardot. It's like French or something. Yeah, something like that. Um, in the Sutherland Shire, we call it Pardot. Um, Pardot's basically a Salesforce um, pl plug plug-in add-on um, that allows you to actually bridge some of that gap. Um, there's another little tool which is this is this is really quite a helpful one called GA Connector. GA stands for Google Analytics. This one, this one basically um, allows you to connect your Google Analytics data with um, most readily used CRMs. So PipeDrive, you know, um, ActiveCampaign, Hubs, you know, all, all these sorts of things that allow you to, to connect with, um, which, is, which is good because remember we can use Google Analytics to track from, from like marketing source to lead we just need to then connect that gap to go, great, here's the sales I can see in my CRM so I can track the whole process. Um, and then HubSpot. Look, HubSpot's like the hardest to use easy program on the planet. Um, HubSpot's one of those programs that if you're willing to really t like go through the, the steep learning curve, then it hits a point where it plateaus and suddenly you're like, oh, this was easy. Um, there's a spreadsheet here. I mentioned before that um, through conversion that one of the things that you could, you could do is get a junior to sit there and map out like here's everywhere that people can say yes or no in my business. Here's a spreadsheet we've put, we've put together. We just it's just a formatted way that you could give to someone to use. All right, positioning. <coughs> so this is one of my favorite ones because it's it's one of the most commonly overlooked, and yet it's also one of the things, one of the areas that can get you the biggest bang for buck gains. So couple of resources, there's uh, uh, two books here as resources and then here's a bit of a concept. So the two, two books that I really love here for this, um, there's one called Good to Great by Jim Collins. So this, it's not the easiest book to read, I won't lie to you. It's a real like, uh, it's basically, uh, it's, uh, it was like a five or a seven year study that where they went through and they, they studied all of the greatest businesses of all time. The businesses who complete that, despite all odds, completely bucked the, the trends in their industry and just consistently outperformed everybody else. They didn't do it across small businesses. We're talking like the biggest businesses that have ever been. Um, but they've got this great concept in there called the hedgehog concept. Here's it, here's it in simplest, its simplest form. There's the hedgehog and there's the crafty fox. The crafty fox is trying to eat the hedgehog. The crafty fox never attempt it never attempts the same method twice to get the hedgehog, and yet boring old hedgehog just has one strategy. All it does is every time the fox comes, it rolls up into a ball with its spikes out. The fox has got nothing. The, the, what they worked out was the greatest businesses of all time were the ones who who were able to identify what is their hedgehog concept. What's the one thing that they can do better and and different than anyone else in their market? And they just stuck to that. Um, 
This one here I absolutely love. Andrew Griffiths is an Australian guy. Much easier book to read. Really charismatic guy. You'll, you'll punch through this thing in a weekend. No worries at all. Someone has to be the most expensive. Why not make it you? One of the, the so what this actually is, is like a, a practical step-by-step -step how to guide on how to be the best in your industry. So Andrew's principle is you can, you should be the best, you should be the most expensive, but to be the most expensive, there's one, one and only caveat. You have to also be the best. And so what this book is actually about, it's a, it's just a, it's a how to formula on how to be the best. Um, we use this one. We actually doubled our prices. Uh, exactly doubled them about three months, four months ago. And interestingly, our sales conversion rate went up same week. Work that out. Um, and we keep saying that we, with every client we roll this out with, same thing. Again, you want to make your marketing work. He who can, you know, this is a bit of a sexist quote. Dan Kennedy well, used to say that he who can afford to spend the most to, our, to acquire a customer wins. Um, and some other concepts going really narrow. So marketing actually isn't hard. Like you don't need me. You don't need a fancy agency. You don't need a, deg a degree. If you're willing to go narrow enough in who you're targeting, then anybody could create the world's best marketing campaign. But the trouble is businesses want to go really, really wide, especially in the RTO space, because you keep getting more and more, you add more to scope. You see this new funding over there, you want to go over there, um, which makes it more challenging from a positioning and a marketing standpoint, right? Um, so it'd be interesting at the end of this, we can workshop some different ways to, 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 to get to, to nail the positioning while still being wide. Um, some ways that people go narrow is you can go narrow either by industry, like a common thing you see in like the digital marketing space especially in, the, in bigger markets like the US is they'll, they'll go, okay, great. I'm just the digital marketing specialist for the dental industry or for the vet industry. Um, or another, another way that you can actually do it is just by, by choosing a particular company size or a particular company problem. Um, like I'm going to use Angela as an example. Like she could be, you know, the RTO consultant for people who want to buy an RTO. I know that's a bad example because it's hard to buy an RTO, but et cetera, et cetera suddenly it becomes much easier to, to nail your positioning because anyone it's, you've got fewer people you've got to try and understand and so forth and so on. Conversion, really great book, super easy to read, um, building a story brand. So people in general are really, really bad at being able to explain what it is they do and why they do it and why you should care about it. Um, and RTOs in particular aren't great at this. So this is basically a how-to guide on how to make any marketing piece uh, position such that even at an, at an instant glance, someone can, people just get what it's about and they, they want to take an action. So, and why this is important for RTOs is especially for you guys that have heaps of stuff on scope is your websites are inherently confusing as hell. Like, because... People hit it and hit the website and they're like, cool, what do we do? There's a picture of a happy young couple. Um, but then it says gun training and beauty training and forklift license. Uh, like really, there, there, there's some basic stuff we can do though to overcome that. Like, but it really comes down to going, what's the core problem that everybody has? Um, and how do, we, how do we give that to them in the, the least confusing ways, way possible? The lift method. I, I, this is so simple, but this has made me so much money. So there's, I didn't come up with the lift method. I really wish I had of, um, cause it's so simple yet. It's great. If you guys, um, if you guys were to just Google, I do have it here somewhere. The lift method basically shows you this and it, it goes through and it actually explains, there's a whole thing here that explains how to do each of them. Um, this is basically a, 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 a strategy that you could use. If you've got any page on your website or, or Facebook page or LinkedIn profile or what have you, that's already got quite a bit of traffic, but it's not converting. This is, this is basically a step-by-step a, a -step how-to on how to fix that. So we have two companies that, that roll us in twice a year um, to, you know, they're, they're businesses that have, they're both big SaaS companies, software as a service, got about a hundred, a hundred thousand unique web visitors per month on their website. 
and they're traditionally they're really bad at, at inherent, inherently really bad at converting them into free demos and free trials and stuff like that. And so we basically come in, we just do this process on all their inquiry pages. The difference it makes is huge. We basically create some sort of urgency. We make sure the value proposition is really clear and stand out. We make sure that the relevance is there. Like if they came off of, if it's a landing page, they got to by coming off of your a Facebook ad that it references the copy from the Facebook ad. So subconsciously they're going, oh, I'm in the right spot. It's really clear, we reduce anxiety and distraction. I'll, I'll leave it at that because if you guys wanna go looking for this, it's, there's so much good information you can get just by Googling it. Um, various website optimization tools. So this is such a simple one. There's a free tool called Hotjar. Hotjar basically allows you to Put, do, do a heat map of your website and you can actually see exactly how people are or, or aren't interacting with it. So use, this is one of the things that you'll only have to use it once or twice. Like you really, you just use it and you'll pick the low hanging fruit and you'll be done. Um, but this is great because what we see, so many people, they've got this, a designer will create this website and they're like, based on this theory, they have this assumption about what will work. But when they put that in, into, into reality, that doesn't, it usually doesn't equate to people clicking on the things that you thought they were going to, going to click on. Or often you'll see that people cl will click on things that you, you didn't want them to click on. So this is a great program because you can, because you can do all of that. Um, it's actually quite addictive when you do this to your own website. The first time, the first time you'll be horrified. You'd be like, what? This is how poorly people, this is, this is what people think of the site. Um, after that, it becomes quite fun. Um, what we usually find, why this is so important to do, and this is kind of a mix of this, you know, really nailing um, the story brand stuff and the, the conversion, is when, what you find on websites, and Hotjar will show you this, is that people use, traditionally don't scroll more than twice. So especially when we look on mobile, about 70% at least of your, 70, 75% of, of most users will only scroll well, basically once. They go, there's what's on screen. They scroll down to the next version of it and that's it. So all this time you spend making the bottom of your website beautiful and no one sees it. Which is also why it's so critical that you guys nail what comes up on the screen when your website loads. We, and we have to nail that. You have to make it so crystal clear so that when it loads, people aren't burning calories going, wait, there's a picture of a happy couple but there's a dog, it's a vet. Maybe they do vet courses. I know, but it does say VET. Um, nah, I'm out of here. Um, and then Google Optimize. Look, this is basically a free Google program that allows you to actually split test. So one of the things I'm gonna do in a couple of slides time is I'm gonna start really badly, bad, uh, really badly bad mouthing uh, web designers and web developers. Um, and just because it, not that they're nasty people or anything like that, they're very, play a very important role in the whole process, but there's some clear issues from a marketing perspective with the, how their, their, their line of thinking works. So to, to touch on that a little bit, so usually what will happen when you go, to go okay, our website's not converting well, or it's just ugly, let's, let's beautify it a little bit. What we'll do is we bring in a developer or a designer and they say, great, like, let's do this. Here's this nice design in a best practice. Let's, let's vomit some best practice on it and what that'll do. But it's all based on assumption and it may or it may not work, work better. But to me, I'm like, why would you waste your time doing that? Google optimize is basically you put a line of code on your website. You get a developer off of Upwork to do it. And then suddenly it becomes like a drag and drop web page builder. So, but you can actually do real-time A-B test. So you can say, all right, designer, give me a, 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 like a Photoshop file of how it should look. And then you can have a junior in, 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 in the team use it. It's, it's honestly that simple. You make the page on your website, it look like the design. And you say, Google optimize, set, send half the traffic to the current version, send half the traffic to the new, new one. Let's test, let's test the designer's, designer's assumption before we spend all this money having the whole website redone. All right, sales. So 
<coughs> here's our favorite ways for how we make sales really, really easy. So nail the problem. Sales is actually, people do sales backwards. Like people think like a sales conversation is all about like me vomiting information on you about our solution. So the phone rings and it's like, okay, cool. Our course is two days long. This is, this is the requirements. It's this, that, the other. If you, but by doing that, all that's going to happen is the person's then going to go, go off, go away. They're going to ring two other people so they can compare their, your specs versus their specs. And they make, usually make a decision based on either whether they like the tone of your voice and, with, and whether the tone of your voice didn't turn them off and the specs line up or whether maybe you're located closer to them. When you, if, you, if you do it the other way around, if you, if you really get to, 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 to nailing how you talk about the problem that they have, then what it does, is it just builds in so much trust. Like if you can actually, um, if you can understand the customer and the problem that they have better than anybody else, you'll get the, you'll get the sale every time. Like you want to actually get to the point where you can, you can, uh, you can uh, re repeat back to them language that they say to themselves. Yeah. Like one of our clients, uh, they, they help people to, they provide virtual assistance and they help people to systemize their business. Um, and it's really easy for me to do their marketing because I am basically their ideal customer, I like our business size, the issues we're dealing with in scale and so forth. And so the marketing messages are like um, things like, like we've talked about, we'll think what the sales people saying are things like, do you, do you find yourself saying, I just, I'm just wearing too many damn hats in this business? Um, or if I could just get another me, um, you know, I just need a couple of extra hours in the day. Um, it's just it's easy for me to do it than to teach someone else. Like, but if you can nail the statements that when you say them to the person, the person actually goes, crap, is, is this guy been sitting in the corner here watching me work all week? When you say that, suddenly the sale becomes really, really easy. And suddenly it gets really easy to make your marketing message, all your messaging to work really well. Um, sell an outcome. This works in the RTO space, but it can be a little bit harder to get right. Um, and... Angela, if I, if I butcher something here, let me know uh, from a, a uh, you know, what you can and can't say thing. But so what the RTO that I've been involved with did a lot of like forklift, uh, forklift licenses and things like that. Um, and so problem, let's talk problem versus, I uh, saw um, symptom versus problem. Symptom was I need a forklift license. The problem was I need a bloody job, right? For the most part with who we're dealing with. <clears throat> so rather than we couldn't promise them the outcome, you know, rather than trying to see if you sell on features of features of the, of the product, suddenly they're going, do I have to drive further or is it more expensive? But comparing us versus the competitor, considering the outcome they wanted was to get a job. We basically brought it. We really played on that. So all of our ads had, you know, job assistance and so forth. And so every time someone did, did the course was all about how do we upskill them enough or help them enough with a resume and an introduction to, a recruitment company that we know we knew would take people with less experience and and so forth and game changer ads went from not working to suddenly hey presto we're, we're growing um just by selling the outcome or how that applies to to our agency is rather than going great we offer google ads like for for most businesses we say look we get you to positive roi by month three or you know depending on how much you're willing to spend is we, we can offer a guarantee around that Again, you know, like if you can actually sell the out, find out and sell the outcome thereafter, then making the sale is easy. Yeah. So just from the compliance side there, um, you cannot, cannot sell and promote that you will guarantee them a job, but you can state that you have provide job assistance, placement. Um, you can also say, what is your percentage outcome of um, placing a student into a job? So you can say 90%. 9% of our clients get a job following completion of the training. So, but you need to get the stats. We know that 99% of stats are made up, <laughs> but when it comes to ASQA, you need to make sure you've got those stats there um, that you can demonstrate that through evidence. But um, yeah, so you cannot guarantee a job outcome, but you can talk about stats. Perfect. Good stuff. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> and a little tip with that selling outcomes, it has to be the outcome they actually want, not the one you'd like them to want. Like it can't be the outcome can't be you're gonna pass the course. Like 
and I know you can't guarantee that anyway, but that was just and it, you know, probably not the great best example, but anyway, um, keep it simple. So this has been a huge one for us is that when someone inquires, um, <coughs> excuse me, when someone inquires um, for us about a market, they want a marketing package or they've got a problem, rather than organizing a call where we go through and we analyze everything and so forth, all we do is we basically send out what we call a trust pack. And I didn't come up with this, but it's the sales trainer mate of mine did. We basically send them out a trust pack, which is everything we, we know they're gonna talk about. They're gonna ask about the course in their research, express post it. Then when we actually have the big conversation, it's simple because all we're talking, all we're doing is un unpacking their problem. And at the end of the, at the end of it, it's simple. It's we've unpacked the problem enough, we've created trust, and it's just the natural progression is great. Here's here's the what's next. Uh, this wouldn't work for someone selling corporate courses. It would work for someone speaking to a big company about some large package or training training something, where there's a longer you know high ticket something you're selling in a longer sales cycle. Um, Prelude product. This is a game changer for so many of our customers. Again, people come to us and we say our marketing is not working. Uh, usually, what what they're trying we find when when someone says when someone says that is they're trying to sell this huge thing. Like I'm trying to set, sell a solution that solves a million, you know, ten or fifteen different problems. Usually, what we like, what can work really well is to go great. What's the one biggest annoyance? What's the one like one itch? That, that's most annoying them we can scratch um, and you just sell that. Yeah, what that then allows you to do is for starters, it gives you a way of pre-screening pre leads that come through because rather than to go that, you know, uh, it works quite well because you can actually monetize less sexy leads. Do you guys talk about leads in terms of sexiness in the RTO space, Angela? They weren't sexy when I was in that space, I gotta tell you. Um, so let me give you an example of a pro product in our agency. We went from selling packages of a couple of thousand dollars a month, let's say $3,000 a month, you know, get positive ROI per month three or your money back and stuff like that. Um, big sales cycle to sell that versus now what we say, company comes through, but for the most part, we say, great, we'll do once off marketing cut through package, two and a half thousand dollars upfront. What we'll do is we'll help it. We'll, we'll analyze, we'll find you the biggest hole in your marketing and we'll basically just come in over 30 days done for you we'll do it all we'll come through and we'll basically plug that hole such that you get instant roi you get to see how what we're what it's like working with us um and you get enough instant instant return on your investment such that you can you can then go to your boss or your, your directors and say look we've, we're going to use this money that we've made to pay for that and the, the, the conversion rate from the little product to the big one is huge because suddenly you're selling to a, a repeat customer. All right, traffic. All right, so we're at the end of this thing. This is what most people, people inquire about and I'm doing it last. So I'll talk about Google related traffic. So basically I've, we've broken this down into Google ads and search engine optimization. So we, most people, nine out of 10 people do Google ads really, really ineffectively. And so what they end up with is heaps and heaps of wasted spend. Um, you know, as Angela sort of alluded to with the Vivacity account before, um, and it wasn't because they were doing it poorly, they were doing it like most people do it. Um, so making sure the right tracking in place is, is usually the, the best way to, to I'll, I'll, I'll jump, I'll get ahead of myself here. When there's a link you guys can follow here, um, when we provide you the deck, it's basically got two videos. They're pretty old. They're about 12 months old, still as relevant now as ever. They were actually from two, from two Facebook lives that my team just turned into a video and stuck here because people kept asking for the recording. Um, they basically show you how you can fix all this stuff. So making sure the right tracking's in place. You're not bidding on stuff like, like VET was, the, was a great example of this with Angela. Instead of VET, they're looking for a, a VET practice. And properly using Google's AI, you know, Google's much smarter than a human sitting there. You just need to make sure you're able to leverage it properly. Um, all right, Hero SEO. So <coughs> I'm gonna get a little bit nerdy here, guys. I'm gonna put my, my nerdy cap on and we're gonna do this. I don't even know where it's politically correct to say nerdy anymore. I've lost, I've lost count, lost track. Um, so we, this is what we call our Hero SEO strategy because when we do this, uh, we end up looking like absolute heroes. 
So for most businesses, if you've had a website, if you've had your website rebuilt at least once somewhere in the past, I can say with 99.9% .9 certainty that the developer slash designer will have taken out key bits of SEO that were propping up your rankings. And so what will, ha what will have happened is you'll, your website will have had some sort of pattern like this. It's going along, web, de web developer talks you into rebuilding it and whoa, you, you drop off. Or stuff like this. This was a big publicly listed, uh, good, uh, what do you call them, Goliath we got brought into. They spent 12 months down here, spent hundreds of thousands of dollars and, and their traffic halved. They brought us in here. We did nothing more than analyze what had been stripped out. We added it back and away it went. Or he, or here's a good example, Angela, this is an actual vet. We see this pretty commonly too, where the web designer redesigns the website and sets it up so Googlebot, Google can't even add it to the search results. <laughs> Look at this, that's, that's no traffic. That's not a single person. And then funnily enough, we, fix, we, we fixed it, same developer, uh, turned the, made, turned the same setting back on, dropped it for a month. <laughs> he finally got fired here. Finally, unbelievable. Um, so for, for most of you guys, you'll have stuff like that. You'll have patterns like this. So what Hero SEO is all about is essentially here's what you guys can do. There's a program called SEMrush that offers a free trial. You will have to add a credit card, but you can cancel it at the end of the 30 days and get charged nothing. If you were to go, pop, go over here and pop your website in, like, here's one I prepared earlier. If you were to come over here, uh, he, well, this is actually our mate, the vet. If you were to pop your website in here, and all you're looking for is patterns. So you can see here's a pretty obvious pattern. Then what you would do, so you'd pick the, you'd pick the spot where, the, where the, we previously you are at your peak. You can go to another program, which is free, called the way back machine, pretty high tech. You could pop your website in over here. This basically allows you to see back in time of exactly what your website used to look like. You can pick the, you can pick the month, you can pick the time frame. You can basically allows you to like look under the bonnet of all of your competitors and stuff like that. Um, free to use, completely free in this one. Now, the, qu the question that you guys should be asking is what are we looking for? So for most of you guys, it'll, but it'll just be, and again, we're going to give you the slide deck. This is the stuff people get wrong when they do this. It's usually this stuff. It's like, like there's a common theme in design now. Um, and it makes sense because it, it's user friendly where it's like minimal, minimal where they'll, the old website had the homepage had 500 words of content. The new one has two words and a picture of a lampshade. And the designer says that's, that's like, you know, that meets the, that's best practice. Trouble is Google hates that kind of stuff. So what we're looking for, what key content was removed? Really easy to do. You bring up your current website, you bring up the old version and you go, look, bring in your junior. So you're right, side by side, what's missing? Um, usually it's stuff like, oh, hello. usually it's stuff like uh, links from the header and the footer of the site really common links from the home page. Just, just heaps of pages that get removed. This is such a big one where you have a website rebuilt and you go, you know what? It used to have 500 pages. Let's, let's cut it down to 200. Let's not worry about those old pages. Yeah. Versus the, the ideal way to do it is you would have got someone to talk to you about which ones are important to bring across or to redirect and stuff like that. Uh, just the basic uh, SEO settings being changed. This is probably the most, I should have put this one first because this is really like equal. This, this one and this one are basically equal with, with, with like pages not being created. The basic SEO settings, just get developers just strip this stuff out. Um, remo removing old pages and stuff like that. Or like with our vet, the developers just not making sure that the website set back so, so that Googlebot can come through and look at it. Um, I know this is a little bit, I've gone, I know I've, I've gone really in the reads with you in this slide and I've gone nerdy. Um, if you've got a, a, a semi marketing savvy junior that has the ability to sit there and, and do some YouTube searches on this stuff based on this slide, they could do most of this. 
if you want to save time, uh, by all means, I'm happy to make some time available for one of my guys to have a look at it. If you guys just want to do just as a bit of an audit, we nerd out on this stuff, so it's really no biggie for us. Um, that's basically us, Angela. Awesome. Um, now, we haven't got any questions in the chat so far, so... I'd <laughs> <laughs> um, so we did have a comment from Anne, since focusing on our niche, mar um, our marketing cost yes. has reduced by 80% and our lead generation has doubled. Nice. So, yeah, good so job. So um, guys, if you've got any questions, um, we don't actually finish at 11, Nathan, so I'll just let you know, it actually goes a little bit longer, but I want to allow enough time for uh, questions. Have we got any questions about the SEO? Have you started looking at your own website and what it's doing? Hi, Ryan, would you like to come up as a speaker? So I'll just find you, there you are. Um, I believe this industry is heavily relying on agents. So in particular for this would be for Krakos international students. So um, yes, and from that. So if you're relying on agents, which is not where you can rely right now because international students is not where everyone is, um, you need to also, you know, this is a big area at the moment because if you're an RTO that focuses on international students, you would have a big downturn right now. And we need to actually work out how can you get a domestic market as well as having your international market. When the borders open back up, it's going to be huge. But you know what, Ryan, you know what would be really good if we didn't have to use an agent because we pay so much in commission for agents. Wouldn't you prefer to have someone come directly through your website? Uh, Joel, what cost is involved in getting Nathan's team to review a new website? Yeah, sure. Look, let's have a conversation about it. We're, I'm happy to have a quick look at it and first up and see, sorry, I'm just going to cough. <clears throat> I'm happy to have a conversation with you guys at no cost and we'll have a quick, a quick look together. Um, and then if, if I think there's actual potential there where it's worthwhile going further, we can talk about it. Um, we have a, a cut through package of two and a half thousand dollar once off. Um, but it, look, we're not interested in offering that to you unless we can actually see that you're going to make an ROI from it really quickly. So nothing to have a conversation. Is there a place where they can book in? Sure. I'll drop one. I shall drop one here in the chat. Okay, so if you're interested in having a chat further with Nathan, um, he's going to pop a link in the chat. Now, we've had a couple of clients who have been uh, using Disruptor and they've had some great results. Uh, so I can definitely vouch for Disruptor. Uh, I know it's had a massive impact on our SEO as well. Like it's just been massive. Uh, change and actually getting the right leads coming through into our website um, and then uh, booking a discovery call. Uh, and so we're saving time and money uh, due to that as well. Um, <laughs> Anne's put, my website looks too pretty. Can you have a look, please? <laughs> Should we bring it up? Can I put you on the spot, Anne? Yeah, uh, Anne, I'm sure Anne would be up for that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do it. Now, hopefully my team aren't using SEMrush right now. I could get kicked out. Let's do the, oh, hang on. That didn't oh, work. Wrong one. Yeah, sorry. I don't know. Analyze your own website. It didn't then. let me grab the... It won't let you uh, copy from in there, so it's... Could you read it Ali, out for me? Yep. Um, Ali, Allium works. So A-L-I-U-M works. .com.au. Awesome. Do, 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 do. Let's do this. Let's do this. I know I'm talking to myself. Important. So I think, and this is a new website. 
So, um, so we can I jump on here? Sorry. Yes. Sure. Um, hi, um, so Anne speaking. So we've had this website for about three years, but we've had it changed three times. And yeah, so we've definitely had some, um, over the last 12 months, had absolutely zero conversions on our website. Mm -hmm. And we've now changed it to make it rail specific. But if you, so we specialize in rail and construction and we deliver um, industry specific training. But if you have a look at our website, it's very pretty. And there's really nothing that says it's about construction. That was even my feedback. You know, I, I really like what you've done here, how you've nailed this. Like, at least that's a good one-liner. I know it's more technically two-liners because it, it changes multiple lines, but this is really clear. I, exactly what you've said, it's it just, there's no link at all to, like, do you, are you a recruitment company for office workers? Is this, like, what do you, do you work with certain nationalities, like, specifically, like, like there's just no link to the right to rail. Um, um, and also because, you know, it, it's a lovely colour you've used, but it's not really a colour that you'd associate normally it's a very touchy feely it's not really one you'd associate with a lot with rail that's okay that's not that's not i'm not saying throw the baby out of the bathwater. my biggest feedback here to be honest is there's there's no call to action there's nothing i can do so yeah. people people want want to be i shouldn't say want to be sold to but they certainly want to be led um they certainly they certainly want to be led um so I've did this looking, they want to, something needs something to do like the biggest. And then the other thing you need to be really responsible with the website is what attracts your eye. Like if I look away and come back, where does my eye go? Like she, she's very overpowering. Like your eye naturally comes here, which is also a bit off putting because she isn't all that congruent with what you guys do. Uh, it's great that she's looking this way on desktop. That'll change on mobile. Cause she's look, she's looking in the direction of this. Um, but the main call to action that grabs me is, is this one up here, which obviously is like for repeat customers. So I'd be going like, what's the main thing you want people to do? Do you want them, do you want them to straight up inquire? Do you want them to search for a, a particular course? Do you want them to identify the problem they have? And yeah, that, so right now our, our laser shop focus is to get more enrollments in our courses. So we essentially want more people in our courses, but if you even look at the courses, yeah. And of course, it's tab, it's a bit, yeah, you need to go search for it. Yeah, well, that, that hurts. That hurts the eye to look at, sure. But at, le at least you've got here, at least there's something they can apply for and do. It's a little bit confusing. We talk about it. And, and this is this is also an RTO problem because you've got, like, genuinely, there's two, I get that there's two different versions of the, of the course. That gets a little bit confusing, though, because it's almost like if I throw two tennis balls at you, I reduce the chances of you catching either. Yeah. See, that's a little bit confusing, but you're right in that. It's certainly a pretty website. So he, here's the good thing. Uh, like there's, you know, that's, that's, uh, there's that old saying, like small hinges swing big doors. Like there's little changes you could make here that are going to make a big difference. Like that you, that, uh, you don't need a website overhaul or anything like that. Just need some basic changes to the imagery, the messaging and the call to action will make a huge difference. Uh, let's have a look here. Cool. Okay. If there's not a whole heap of hero SEO that could be done. You pretty, I mean, your, your growth is pretty flat line across the board. Website first went live back here somewhere. Most of your traffic or hundred percent of your traffic's branded. So you're obviously not doing much any SEO. What do you do for marketing? We've got um, Google ads, which I've just switched off yesterday. And um, we do do a lot of uh, um, marketing through Facebook. And that's where all of our lead generation is coming from at the moment. Right. You must use a, like a landing page builder or something, do you? Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's not showing here. Okay. Okay, cool. Hey, listen, look, my, so my feedback is good job. If what you're doing is working, keep doing it. You don't need to get fancy. Um, there's little changes you could make to the website that would definitely boost the, just to make it clearer of what you do and what, what you do and what you want people, what action you want them to take. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Anthony. And if there's any learnings, if I mean, obviously we can't see what your landing pages that, that, are, that, using, that are using for your ads look like. If there's anything that, that, that's different on, on them versus the website that you could learn and bring across, then go for it. Is there anybody else that'd like to share 
it's um, I love doing this live stuff. It's really good because you get to see what other people got on their websites and what's working, what's not working. So if anybody else would like to share, just let me know. Um, and I think Simone has said, uh, we use Disruptor as well and recommend them highly, knowledgeable team and on trend. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Thank you. Uh, much appreciated. You're invited to Christmas. <laughs> okay, so we've got those. Uh, yep, so I think we've answered everything there. <laughs> and Simone said, I clearly can't spell. <laughs> I, I wasn't even looking at that. I was just <laughs> reading your text. Um, anybody else want to share, up, ask a question? Um, would you like your website looked at? I like doing this hot spot um, where we can have a look at a website. If you'd like your website looked at, uh, pop it in the chat and we can definitely have a look at it. See if anybody's willing to share. So we've got a few people online, so I'd like to know. Um, Ryan, did you want to share yours? Because you asked a question. Come on, no pressure. I'll be nice, <laughs> I'll be gentle. It's a great opportunity to have um, your website looked at uh, right now. And I know uh, some of the things that we've done with our website is like we have up in the top corner, book a discovery call. So, um, and that when we changed our website to have book a discovery call, um, instead of just a contact us page, we actually got a lot more uh, leads coming in. And our phones weren't ringing as often. They just booked directly in as a, a call and then we were able to um, uh, just book them in for a call and take them uh, you know, through straight away. So it made it so much easier uh, going through them. Uh, can you help with content writing and social media? Mm -hmm. Spill over. Yep. Yes. Yep. For the right customers, yeah. Look, look, what you what you should recommend is let's have a conversation first and see exactly what again what's what the symptom is versus the problem as long as everything lines up there then yes it's not our most popular service but we do offer it as a as a way for people to get more value from other services okay someone's in the middle of rebuilding their website edupathways.com right. got it edu edu pathways all right let's have this one up here so man, let's see if i spell it correctly <laughs> uh, sorry, was it .com .au? Yes. Well, it wasn't like a. Okay. Yeah, you've thrown me a curveball, haven't you? <laughs> Is there an English version, yeah. Martin? No, I think. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's just translate. It's just translating. Uh, yeah, Martin, help help us out here, buddy. Uh, I'll just let Martin uh, get on and speak. Martin, if you'd like to share. Yeah. Um, good morning, guys. Um, there should be an English version. Um, if you press the uh, translate uh, button, I think. Yeah. So there's the Chinese version of it. Uh, this is the this is the English version. Yeah, now we just get yeah, transformed into English. But um like I said, we are in the process of rebuilding um sure. the lot. Um because you know I think uh, you you mentioned a few points with the previous website with the Alium Alium works. Um, sort of it, it put us off market that we represent one uh, particular group of uh, students and uh, sure. yeah and then I've just started with the business and I'm in the process of trying to put things in place um, however uh, my, my main concern would be uh, getting all the conversions and, and uh, uh, traffic through um, just had a look at the, the, the 
Wayback Machine uh, website. Um, so who are your target like audience, Martin? For this year. Martin, who's your target audience? Is it in Australia or in China? Um, it's more on, on both, both, both. And um, it's not just in China or it's more uh, Europe, uh, Southeast Asia and South Asia and on shore. Sure. Okay. Sure. What's... Look, the... The, <clears throat> the good news is with this is because the website doesn't really have a, a heap of um, SEO value at the moment, um, it, that, that's actually a good problem in, in a lot of regard because that makes your job easier when you're redoing the website because there's not as much you have to worry about losing. Like it's yeah. a bit more of a clean slate. I'm like just looking here. So I mean, the website has ranked better previously, but it was still it wasn't it wasn't a, it wasn't a great deal coming through. Like that's saying the equivalent of twelve users a month, so it's not, not a lot. And it mostly what it ranked for were just different variations of your your brand name, things like that. Um, yeah. See, I, I assume it's so. It's it's a HTML website, and you're, are you bring it across to WordPress yeah. or something like that? What's the plan? Are you going to what platform that's going right on. yes I'm, I'm i'm bringing it across to wordpress yeah okay cool look so all you basically all we need to worry about here is how we nail the, the chinese conversion because that is something that you really want to make sure that you've got the right groundwork done because there's nothing worse than having to like update that later having it mess with your different marketing um yep. there's two ways we probably should have an offline conversation about this rather than boring everyone because yours is a fairly unique problem it's not, all right sorry, it's not a problem I should, it's not a problem that yours is a, the situation's somewhat unique we've had to do this with a number of our customers that deal with like bitcoin and financial services that are very big in china um right. just trying to make the site uh, with wordpress sites trying to get it right so it'll do deal with multi-language there's simple ways you can do it like just plugins and stuff like that but yep. it's always tough because if you build it just based on a plugin, uh, that's all well and good when the site's quite small and has not much traffic. But when it's got heat, if, it's, if you're planning to really blow it up, then it's annoying later when you've got these limitations. Okay. Yeah. Reach out to us. What, what, yeah, what? I will. I will, Nathan. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Cool. Thanks, Angela. <laughs> not a problem. Um, and I like doing this because. Um, it, even though you're saying it's unique, it's also really looking at, okay, sometimes people have the same problems and it's, it makes it easier if they're actually having a look. Uh, and I know like last year I did a shout out just to our members and asked them who was do, using SEO and Google ads and there was a lot of people who were not. Uh, and when you are in the RTO market, and even Krikos, you really need Google optimization, Google ads, because the big thing is um, you're competing against other RTOs. So you really need to, like what Nathan said, you need to have a unique selling position. What's unique about you? Big thing for me is really defining who is your target audience, who is your ideal uh, learner cohort, and then making sure your website is addressing that. Is it corporate? Is it the business owners? Is it the individual student? Who are you appealing to? And then that's how your website should go, should be designed, is around who are your target audience. And, um, and then the call to action should be based on what their needs are as well. Uh, another question, how can RTOs get their vibe right and show this on the website through the language used? Cool. Colors? yeah yeah it's cool it all comes down to understanding the customer's language so really just talk to the talk to the customers so a big problem that you guys find that you guys face not i mean you guys as an industry um is that there's like you're trying to please lots of people because you're like you're trying to look good to the, you know like to the gut to government the government and to the you know do you want to get accredited for, you want to be able to get all this funding you also want to look, want to save face to other rtos mm -hmm. and um, but then, then you've got the most important person, which is the customer. 
that you, you want to really try to be speaking their language, but then you also want to make sure you've got like accreditation things you've got to get around and it's, you know, in that mix of speak, you know, like we see most, most RTOs whose websites you jump on, it's like their content looks like it was taken straight from like a government accreditation site. It's like almost like reading off of, uh, out of an encyclopedia and it's, and it's boom. And they're trying to use that to sell a course. Um, um, but it really comes down to just understanding the customer. I really understand the more you can understand their problem and, and the language that they actually use and put that into the wording on your website, the better it will all work. Um, and I know what you're talking about there, Nathan. They've copied and pasted from uh, training.gov.au the information about the course. Yeah. They haven't, yeah. And I see it all the time. I, I go on the websites and it's like, that doesn't really tell me what you're going to do for me. Yes, it may be compliant. But you need to make sure that you're capturing your audience. What's the purpose of having a website if you're not actually directing to them? What is it that we can do for you? Exactly. And look, the other thing we see with these sort of markets, this is also we see a lot with our like <clears throat> doctors and even with our vets have this as well, um, is that they want to, I mean, it's like you've built this, this business that you're proud of. And you, you speak you speak with certain language and a certain level of sophistication with your peers, and so you want that your business described in that sophisticated language. But the hard thing is, if you sell courses to young people, they don't give a shit. Sorry, they don't give a shit about your sophisticated language. That doesn't strike a chord with them. So it's like getting that mix with your website and your marketing so that it, it appeals to. It's still the business you're proud of, and it's you, but it's actually going to work with the customers. That's the balance. But again, yeah. the person who understands the customer's problem and language the best is the one whose marketing is the easiest. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and the big thing is, is uh, uh, as you said earlier, what problem are you solving? Uh, and I think, you know, really looking at Anne's website as well, uh, it didn't have anything on there to, uh, with regards to um, imagery that was relevant to her industry sector. So you really need to, you know, put in it. What would it look like if I got a job in your industry sector? That, that's the type of photos that you should have in there um, is, is images that will, they can see themselves in that position. Um, Anne said, how do we sign up? Uh, if you just click on that link uh, that Nathan's just popped in the chat there, you can book a uh, call. Uh, with Nathan and what will happen there is uh, Nathan can do a little uh, digital marketing audit and have a look at where you're at right now. So um, I highly recommend it. Okay, so unless we have any further questions or anybody else who'd like to hot seat, um, this has been awesome. Great. Uh, can you resend the link, please? Yep, it's in the chat there, Anne. Oh, you just sent it to all panellists, Nathan. You need to change it. Oh, I got it. Oh, got it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll pop that link in the chat. I'm sure Nathan's doing it now. Um, and if you'd like to know more, just book this uh, call with Nathan and he'll be able to um, assist you and do that uh, quick marketing order. This is an area I highly recommend you get in, have a look at, look at your search engine optimization, look at even the organic side of your website and what it's doing and how you can improve that. Um, the training industry is just going through boom right now and you need to compete against the other RTOs that are out there. Um, and the best way is not to look at it as your competition, look at how do you stand out in front of all of the other RTOs? What do you do that's different? What's unique about you? That should all be on your website. Um, do you help with work placement? Do you work with job active providers? Like answer those questions on your website so that as a student, and you've got to put yourself in the student shoe, if I go on your website, I know how you're going to be able to help me as a student. Um, and if you've got international students, the other great thing is um, I think as soon as the borders open up and we get all these vaccinations out, it's going to boom in Australia because we have, because of so, the small amount of COVID cases that we've had in Australia com in comparison to other countries, international education is going to boom. So I really recommend that you 
get yourself set up for that as well. Uh, thanks a lot for Angela, this great session, and Nathan for running us through some uh, details of SEO. Looking forward to more productive sessions like these. Awesome. Not a problem. All of these masterclasses, once a month, we hold these uh, masterclasses, so the eight critical drivers to RTO success. Um, on the first Wednesday of each month, we run this masterclass um, and we've already done uh, quite a few. We've uh, done one on um, student retention already. Uh, we've also uh, done one on leadership. Uh, I think we've got one coming up for leadership. So there's all sorts of uh, great information coming up. So thank you very much, Nathan, for coming along today. I've put your link also in our Facebook group. I'll also put it on the RTO community board. So uh, for anybody who's on here who's not a member, you can join the RTO community. Um, and it's where we share lots of information about the uh, training industry and uh, what you, you know, and keeping you connected with you know, people like Nathan. Um, and I'm just gonna pop this in the chat. Um, we also manage the RTO job board. So the RTO, our peer has just popped in the chat. So the next masterclass is on systems and practices and it's on the 14th of July. Uh, so Wednesday, the 14th of July, second Wednesday, second Wednesday of every month. Um, and we will also, uh, yeah, so there's the RTO community. Highly recommend that you get onto that one. Also, we manage the RTO job board. So the RTO job board has been absolutely going off. Uh, Kira's just popped that in the chat. Uh, we now have 980 members on there all over Australia, and we've really been focused on um, making sure that we're uh, targeting trainers and assessors and getting trainers and assessors on there. So if you are a trainer or assessor, I recommend that you get on there. Uh, but also uh, for our RTOs, where uh, we're connecting um, RTOs with staff in the training industry. So trainers and assessors, compliance managers, um, lots of different uh, types of people uh, because uh, who work within, who want to work within the training industry or are working in the training industry, recommend that you get on there because uh, we've been getting some great results there uh, by building this community. And the main reason why we created the job board was to solve our clients' problem of finding trainers. So they were having issues trying to find trainers. And right now it's actually really difficult because we've got lots of training and courses that are available, but um, our clients weren't able to find the trainers and assessors. So we highly recommend that you uh, get onto the job board and also the RTO community uh, where you can um, also connect with other people who are in the RTO community. Um, and share. So thank you very much, everybody, for coming along today. Thank you very much, Nathan, uh, for being our guest speaker today. Uh, we look forward to catching up with you next time. Um, and please get onto those uh, groups and we'll be in contact soon. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>